You need to change your job, call on an angel. You need help with your relationship, call on an angel. You need to do the ironing. There is an angel of ironing. <laughs> they have got one thing right. And the one thing that they've got right is that you can call on an angel. You can call on the angel within. There has been for many years, for many decades, uh, a, 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 an us and them situation in, in literature, in spiritual teaching, to say that the angels are apart uh, from us. The, the, we are one line of evolution, the angels are a different line of evolution. In fact, this is what Michael believed many years ago when he started out as a medium, and he saw angels and said, how wonderful to see angels, they are completely different from us, they are taller, they have glowing colours, they have booming voices, they are beautiful, and all of these things are true. But the time has come now to reveal the truth globally, to reveal the truth, to lift man's mind, to lift man's heart and to say, you were an angel, you are an angel. You just took a wrong turn in that garden, that beautiful garden, and found yourself in a maze. But it is time to come out of the maze. And there is no quicker way to come out of the maze than to recognise what you were what you are and where you are going and what lies ahead of you. God's firstborn, angels, God's firstborn, highest expression as a child of God, as a spark of God, is the angel, is you. You fell out of the heavens. You fell to earth. You are disguised. You are undercover. But the secret mission is now revealed. The secret mission is to remember who you are and reveal it to other people. Do you see angels all the time? Look in the mirror, you see an angel. Sit on the bus, you see angels. Look at a football match, you see angels. You cannot see anything other than angels in the human form because that is what the human form really contains. Is that a sufficient answer? It's more than enough. <laughs> I'm delighted when I can give more than enough. <laughs> Next question, please. So if you have, like, have the two people living the more simpler life, uh, they're surrounded by um, material things and so on and so forth, so would we look, be looking to live more simply? The material things, you see, even within the field, set to negative, messages surface. And the material things you have around you are a cry for help. Because the material things are almost as though the human race is saying, if I can raise the level of technology, things will be all right. If I can invent a better car, things will be all right. If I can build a bigger building, things will be all right. Because all these things will elevate me somehow. All these things will make me feel better for five minutes. The message that you are giving yourselves is that you are trying to get back to that connection with God. So you invent better, bigger, faster, things in the subconscious hope that those things will lead you to a better life and it is the better life that you want that is in the subconscious but not the better life that is the yacht and the pool the better life that comes from knowing who you are and reacting to other people in a godlike manner and they to you the material things that you have around you are not evil the material things are only evil, but that is the wrong word, are only a smokescreen when you allow them to be. And there is nothing wrong with enjoying your technology, enjoying your cars, enjoying your buildings, enjoying your music. But at the same time, you have to remember two things. The first is that they are not yours. They are not yours. 
and the second is that one day you must leave them behind for someone else. You must leave them behind. Again, there is a subliminal message, there is a subconscious message in so many people saying, this is mine. This car is mine. This house is mine. This holiday is mine. This money is mine. These people are mine. Because you are trying to draw to yourself that which constantly slips away on a subconscious level. The need to be part of each other and to be part of God. But you misplace your quest. You place your quest into materiality. And you should be placing your quest in the search for God within and within each other. Then... You enjoy the materiality, but it does not dominate you. You enjoy the materiality, but it does not imprison you and you can work just as spiritually as you could have done in ages past without the technology. The technology can be good. The materiality can be good. It is knowing how to use it and it is recognising in yourself that point at which the material is taking over. Then you have to withdraw and say, yes, it's a nice car. For the amount of time that I've got it. Thank you, Father. Yes, it's a wonderful television. For the amount of time that I have it, it's a privilege to have it. Thank you, Father. But yes, it's also a nice world. It's a spiritual world. It is God's world. And that is forever. Thank you, Father. And no one can take that away from you. Do you see the distinction I'm making? Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. I always want to make sense. I always want to make sense. Why are you, why? Okay, one of my colleagues is giving me a lemon and he's saying that the lemon looks wonderful. It looks wonderful. It has such beautiful yellow skin and then you bite into it and it is bitter. And then you think there might be another lemon that's further up the tree that's sweeter because it's been in the sunshine. That too is bitter. And you take another lemon and another and another and they are all the same. And that, in effect, is what materiality is like. That is a beautiful lemon. I will just bite into it. Not so good. I'll try for another one and another one and another one. When the tree, the actual lemon tree, just stands there and allows the power of God to flow through it and is blissfully happy. You don't need the fruit. You need to be like the tree. You need to say, Father, I am happy, and whatever else you send to me, I thank you for. But at the core, I am one with you, I always will be one with you, and I am going home, and that makes me happy. Who else, please? Or should Joseph go home? No. <laughs> I have a question, but I don't mean to take this space up, but I'm going to ask a question. Um, what's the benefit of having the 12-strand 12, the 12 DNA reconnected? We've basically disconnected it thousands of years ago. What's the benefit of having it reconnected now? I'm sorry, but I don't understand that question. Okay. I do not understand the question. Can you explain that more to me? I was told by my teachers that we have a DNA which we are in the DNA, yes. but 12 strands of it were disconnected many, many thousands of years ago by ETs. Is this correct? According to my knowledge, it isn't. Okay. According to my viewpoint, you must understand that there are many viewpoints on my level, on the levels above, on the levels below. I understand that. What I have to say to you is that the fall, as I see it, because I was part of that shift in consciousness, was caused by certain factions on earth believing that in goodness they could second guess and accelerate God's plan for this part of the universe. And as a result of that, they cause an imbalance in the speed of vibration on this level. And because of that imbalance, the souls then became locked into, if you like, an angry world. 